Met us the mobile and wireless communications enablers for the 2020 Information Society's main objective is to lay out the foundation for 5G. That's the next generation of mobile and wireless communication systems. Heading this effort for the European Union project called Metis at Ericsson is Afif Asarin. Afif, welcome to the program. Welcome. Thank you, Ab. Thank you uh, for being with us. I know you're coming in remotely from Stockholm, Sweden, so we appreciate your time. Um, I see, uh, Afif, rather, I'm sorry, a lot of skeptics out there about 5G wireless technologies. Are there more skeptics this time around uh, as opposed to previous wireless uh, generations like 4G or 3G? Yes, there are, I would say there are two categories of uh, skeptics. The first one is, uh, I would say, the, theoret the theorist. Uh, in terms of research, we have not seen break, breaking through uh, ideas. And uh, so hence people might be questioning why we are moving to new generation without having uh, a new ideas to implement. Uh, the other, the the, the second group is about, I would say, operators, uh, and they have right, they are cautious usually, would like to ensure that we don't start creating a new generation without taking care of the evolution of the current one. Afif, you already mentioned a couple of concerns around 5G, but give me the primary concerns that people are talking about. The primary concern, if 5G will uh, only address uh, the mobile broadband track, uh, which mainly being done by LTE, so we might we might end up with a parallel system to 4G to 4G, and this is exactly what we don't uh, we want to avoid. M meaning, uh, the reason of of going for 5G is to expand into uh, different vertical industrial sectors and we don't only cover uh, telecommunication or the ICT sector. Afif, I know you have a lot of goals over there uh, uh, within your work at Metis um, for 5G wireless technology. One of those primary goals is to increase uh, traffic in, uh, on broadband by a thousand times. Another one is to uh, increase spectrum efficiency. Are those, are those accurate goals? They are accurate goals. I would prefer to to equally talk about other important goals uh, and to break. It's not only about providing higher data volume. It's also equally important to provide uh, uh, communication to the higher number of connected devices, being able to connect the 50 billion anticipated devices, uh, as well increasing the, the user uh, end user typical data rate, uh, or if you would prefer the peak data rate. Uh, the fourth one is about latency, being able to go down for certain use cases. We will come back to it maybe later on, up to a few milliseconds. And the last one about battery life. It's equally important if we think we are going to expand, as I said, into other industries like machine type communication, uh, sen where, where, for example, sensors might play a big role. Uh, then we have to provide a battery life of, of, uh, uh, of uh, about a decade time. Afif, there's a lot of research going on around 5G, as you know, with standards development organizations. When can we expect an official document from Metis on 5G? We do have already several documents available on, on certain aspects of, of 5G. Uh, we went also through the state of the art. Uh, one important document is, is coming. Uh, its initial uh, results on a 5G system concept. It will come next month. Uh, we call it deliverable. We name it deliverable 6.2. As well, the, we have identified the technology components for, uh, for radio links, for, uh, for what we call multi-node and spectrum aspect. And all these documents are coming in the next few months. And I would add, we do have available publications. If you go to our website, metis2020.com, under publications, we do have plenty of articles, as well as overview articles, one coming up next month in IEEE Communication Magazine, summarizing the vision as well, uh, where 
the most promising ideas. You know, with all the, uh, I guess, if, if you will, we're on the hype cycle of 5G wireless technologies, but um, from your perspective and the work you do over at Metis, what are the primary benefits or tenets of 5G wireless technologies? And I know that peak bit rate is one of those benefits, uh, lower battery consumption is another one, but can you go into a little more depth on, on those benefits? Yeah, let's go through some of them. Uh, it's important to, uh, to emphasize uh, that 5G cannot provide at the same time very high uh, data rate, very low latency, uh, and very high reliability. It depends, it's important to look, in METIS we have identified five scenarios. Then uh, uh, these scenarios do uh, describe how the future will look like, and inside these scenarios you do have use cases, and each use cases, uh, of these use cases, they address specific challenges. Uh, some of these challenges might be in terms of data rate, which you mentioned peak data rate, and one specific example or, or, uh, or test, uh, a test case might be in a virtual reality office where there is a big need to increase the data rate up to maybe 10 uh, gigabit per, per second. And other aspects, data rate will play a less, uh, a minor role if we, took, if we look at traffic safety in that case, the most important is delay and reliability. I would say uh, uh, 5G should address the challenges in terms of peak data rate for a specific scenario. It should address the latency for certain other specific scenarios. It should be able to provide uh, a reasonable or good experience data rate when the user is on the move and we are talking then about maybe a few hundred megabit per second uh, so these are the major important aspects and not to forget i would like also to re-emphasize about reliability this is might be the differentiator with the previous generation in the past uh, the wireless or at least mobile communication uh, reliability was not on the top of the agenda uh, simply, we wanted to connect things uh, reasonably and to provide a coverage maybe up to 95%, where you can never guarantee uh, that the communication will will be at maybe bit a rate of what we call the golden 5999.990. So, if we would like to expand to uh, industrial processes, for example, or I name traffic safety or smart grids, in that case, we should ensure that reliability are part of the requirement of 5G. And of course, we, we all, that the basic assumption that all these requirements or the system should be uh, sustainable in terms of cost and energy, uh, meaning that cost for deployment for the infrastructure uh, is extremely important. Uh, the objective is to produce a technology uh, at a reasonable cost. A fifth year analysis uh, detailed in an overview of several documents called the Promising uh, Technology Components that's being developed at Metis that covers current standards, their future evolutions, and the latest academic research. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, of course. Uh, the, the Promising Technology in terms of what we, we, we should define, there are different various aspects which is very important to, to, to address uh, and to research in order to provide a certain time or traffic. Uh, these aspects are very, I would say, these areas uh, can be divided if we're from the classical way. First, physical layer or what we call radio links. Uh, it is connected how, about how do you access the multiple access, about which kind of air interface are you going to use, uh, what kind of coding and modulation is it needed? Uh, the second aspect, if, uh, it's about uh, what we call multi-nodes, where we have more than one link. Uh, and these areas are multi-node coordination. It's about multi-hop network coding. And not to forget, of course, um, MIMO, or more precisely, massive MIMO. The third uh, uh, important area since we are uh, seeing uh, multiple RAT 
radio access technology, then how uh, would you put them all together? Uh, how do you manage? How do you manage interference? Uh, how do you manage mobility? Uh, the fourth aspect is about spectrum. I did not say much about spectrum, but spectrum is one of the major, I would say, not obstacle, but requirements. If we don't get the needed spectrum, then the technology or the system won't be there. Afif, the terms 5G and beyond 2020 seem to be grouped together. Um, why is that number one? And do you think the deployment of 5G will happen uh, before or beyond 2020? Yeah, we talk about 2020 and beyond because 5G, if it's deployed, let's say by 2020, of course, it will last for a very long time. And this is natural to talk about 2020 and beyond. Uh, then, then, excuse me, I did not hear the second part of, the, of your question. Uh, no, you, actually, you answered it, but the second part of the question uh, that I was just about to ask is, are there countries in the race, in the running, if you will, for 5G wireless deployment? And I know there's companies out there in the industry that are doing so, but to stay away from that part of the question, which country will deploy 5G wireless in your, in your opinion first? Now our current basic assumption is uh, 5G will be an aggregate of air interfaces, meaning it will, it will be an umbrella to the evolution of LTE in addition, potentially new uh, technology components addressing the new uh, use cases. In case this assumption is correct, uh, then it's uh, safe to, uh, to say that uh, some of the components of 5G uh, will appear before 2020. And we're in terms of country, if I look what kind of major events are happening worldwide and looking what kind of announcement has been made, uh, announcement, uh, what kind of yeah, announcements have been made uh, the globe in, in the CGK region, for example, China, Japan, and Korea, they begin to be organized both on the political level, uh, uh, arena how to plan for, for 5G. And taking into account, you have the Olympics in 2018 in Korea, the Winter Olympic, and as well the summer in 2020 in Japan. So it's safe to predict probably one of these countries uh, will try to benefit uh, from this big celebration to have uh, maybe if, if the first flavor of the next generation. It's, uh, it's interesting to watch uh, Afif uh, Metis uh, develop and work on 5G wireless technology, technologies and helping to get those technologies deployed into the market. Of course, as you may be aware, TIA has their own 5G symposium uh, that will be held in Arlington, Virginia on uh, Thursday, May 1st. 2014. And for those of you interested in attending, please log on to TIAonline.org. For this video on demand, please visit us at TIANow.org. And Afif, I'd just like to thank you uh, once again for being with us and uh, giving us your time. My pleasure, uh, Abe.